So just in case you hadn't heard or weren't aware of what was going on, Broncos head coach Vic Angrio was very upset with Ravens and coach Harbaugh for the fact that they ran the ball on the very last play of the game just so they could tie a record that's been in the history books for a very long time with the chance of possibly breaking it next week against the Colts. But let's listen to his comments so you can get caught up. Do you have a problem with the last play that Baltimore ran? Yeah, but I expected it from them. You know, I've 37 years and pro ball I've never seen anything like that so but it was to be expected and we expected it so if you expected it why didn't you stop it why did you expect it from them because I just know how they operate you know they that's just their you know mode of operation their player safety is secondary is that something anybody even really talked about that they had 42 straight or whatever the number was 100 yard games I mean, uh, we didn't talk about it during the week but I'm sure the players were aware of it you guys made them well aware of it so we could both see and hear just how upset broncos head coach was with the ravens decision to go for it even though he said he expected it well my grandfather once said if you know somebody's personality if you know the way they operate and if you know what to expect from them then you can't get mad when they do it so why are we still upset but anyway john harbaugh the king of clapbacks the head coach of pettiness he had something to say in regards to Vic's comments. Let's listen. I mean, I thought we were on good terms. We had a nice chat before the game. Uh, known each other for a long time, but I promise you, I'm not going to give that insult one second thought. That's uh, what's meaningful. What's meaningful to us might not be meaningful to them. Their concerns are definitely not our concerns. And, uh, you know, we didn't expect to get the ball back, you know, but I had already decided, we decided that, if we got the ball back, we were going to try to get the yards. And there you have it. What's meaningful to us may not be meaningful to them. Meaning that the record that the Ravens were so close to that they had played so many games and not necessarily been going for, but just so happened to be getting over 100 rushing yards in all these games, they were on the brink of getting it. And the opportunity presented itself because, like he said, they didn't expect to get the ball back. But they did, and they had already made up in their minds, hey, if we get the ball back, we are going for this record. And we got it back with three seconds left. So you're throwing the ball in the end zone with 10 seconds left. I don't know that there's a 16-point touchdown that's going to be possible right there. So, you know, that didn't have anything to do with winning the game. So, like I said, what's meaningful to us might not be meaningful to them, and we're not going to concern ourselves with that. Give me Petty Harbaugh for 300. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and here we are <laughs> here we are the back and forth between Vic and John these boys just ain't feeling each other right now uh Vic was showing his anger Hobbs was showing his pettiness uh but they've been going back and forth with their quotes and I, I'm sure this is probably they, these are going to be the last quotes that we hear or see from them on this issue because it's done it's done. But with Vic Fangio's comments, uh, it's like he he almost contradicted himself because he first off, his ang his anger was channeled towards the wrong thing, because I know there was some confusion from a lot of fans, uh, some Ravens fans, some Broncos fans, just fans of the game, period. There was some confusion, confusion that. He was upset that he wasn't upset that the, the Ravens went for it. No, no, no. That he was upset that his players didn't stop the play. And that's wrong. That's not accurate because he let it be known. His words, not mine, that he was upset that John Harbaugh and the Ravens actually went for that. And the thing where he contradicted himself big time, in my opinion, because he said that with John Harbaugh, they weren't concerned about player safety. He said that player safety, that, that comes second to them. They weren't concerned about it, especially with them going for that rushing record uh, on the last play of the game. Player safety, player safety. So, and, and again, when people say that, they're like, like you, you, you play a 60-minute game of football, and then on a play that's three seconds long, then you want to complain about player safety. But anyway, even besides that, you were down by 16 points. There were, what, 30 seconds left? Now, again, we, we've seen crazy stuff happen now. We've, we've seen it happen. But by the flow of the game, I mean, again, you could never say never, but 
by the flow of the game, it was like, mm, yeah, this this ain't happening. But with 30 seconds left, you were still throwing the ball, even with, with 10 seconds left, with seven seconds left, because the Ravens got the ball with three seconds left. So you, it was, to that point, it became impossible for you to come back. So I, I just can't buy the, oh, Harbaugh and them, they, they ain't concerned with player safety, but we are over here. Even though we still throwing the ball, we still going for it with just a couple of seconds in the game. Not a couple of seconds in a half. Not a couple, but a couple of seconds left in the game. I just can't buy this whole, oh, yeah, we all about player safety. I ain't buying that talk from Vic, man. I, I can't because in this case, his actions and the actions of his team spoke a lot louder than his words. And then to make matters even worse, he talked about how player safety comes second nature to the Ravens. And if we, if he wanted to use an example of a play, he could talk about the Adafi away hit that knocked Teddy Bridgewater out. And how it, there was no call, it gave Teddy Bridgewater a possible concussion, took him out for the rest of the game, and that completely changed the game as well. And with that play, with the hit on Teddy Bridgewater, it did look like from a certain angle, I wish I could have saw it from a different angle, but the only angle I saw it from, it looked like Adafi away, like his helmet hit Teddy Bridgewater, like right here, right there, like on his, on his chin, on his cheek, on his chin. But speaking of player safety, because again, if we're going to have a conversation, if you're going to talk about player safety, it got to apply both ways, my friend. It cannot just be a one way street. So that, of course, it was not called helmet to helmet. Live, it didn't look like helmet to helmet. When you see the replay in super slow motion, it looked like it. But again, it was just from that angle. But speaking of player safety, remember when Lamar threw a nice touchdown to Hollywood Brown? I remember that. It's Lamar in the pocket. Hollywood Brown runs his route. Lamar shoo, throws it to him. Hollywood dives. Shoo, touchdown. But what I didn't see live, I didn't see, I didn't see this till yesterday. Lamar Jackson took a nasty late hit from a Broncos player and there was no call. There was no rough in the passer. It should have been a rough in the passer, but it wasn't. And I didn't hear him talk about player safety when it came to that. I didn't hear a peep. Nothing. Not a word. Didn't hear it get acknowledged. Didn't hear, I didn't hear him say, hey, that defensive lineman on our team. He needs to be more concerned about players. Nope, I didn't hear that at all. And then there was another play where Lamar Jackson, a Broncos player, grabbed him and tried to sort of twist his leg or twist his ankle. And I didn't, he's preaching about player safety, but then your players are doing that. It, it goes directly against what you're saying, my friend. So Vic, his word is just with, with, with his statements, especially about the player safety. He's just he, he lost a lot of credibility with that. Because you, you, you got to practice what you preach. You can't be, oh, yeah, player safety, this player safety, that. And then you got your guys doing that because guys, look, look, guys don't just do that for no reason. Players don't just do that for no reason, because coaches will. If, if a player is doing that, if a player is playing dirty, they they usually told like, hey, try to take that guy out. We hey we we got we got to take that play out. We hey by any means necessary. We got we got to get rid of that guy because he is going to be too. He's just going to mess up our whole vibe today. Because there's coaches that'll tell their players to do that, and there's also coaches that if they see their players doing that, they say no, uh uh, we we don't get down like that. We don't play like that. That's that's not in our DNA. That's not in our bloodline. We ain't having that. Do not do that. Don't don't do that because you jeopardize the player on the other team and you jeopardize our team too. We're not having that and we will not have we will not be a part of that. So don't don't even do it. So which side is Vic on? Who knows? So I just this whole thing is it's just it's been blown out of proportion. And then of course you got all the talking heads in the media and whatnot. Say, oh, man, some people on the side, oh, man, it was just unsportsmanlike of John Harbaugh and the Ravens to do that. And some people like, man, it's a record that's been sitting there for a long time. Go to try to break the record. 
try to break the record. So, I mean, long story short, it is what it is. But now it was what it was because this, I would say this officially marks the end of it. And, I mean, John Harbaugh ended up getting the last laugh in this one. Even besides the whole record thing. I mean, the most important record that was broken was the Broncos being undefeated. And the Ravens moving to three and one. Now the Broncos again. Forget that. I, I think they they see this. This is what happens. I see this a lot. I see this a lot with. I seen it in person a lot, and I seen it with fans of teams a lot. But you see it. It, it comes from coaches a lot too. This is how you can tell when people aren't used to losing. When they haven't lost in a long time. When they haven't had a down moment in a long time. Some people just don't know how to handle it. Like, I, I take you back a couple of weeks. Back a couple of weeks to uh, week two. Ravens played the Chiefs. And Tyreek Hill, who has just been going off against the Browns. He had almost 200 yards receiving. Uh, and then last week he had almost 200 yards receiving. He had like three touchdowns. Crazy games. But against the Ravens, he had three catches for 14 yards. Now, does that make him, did that make him a bad wide receiver? No, he's one of the best wide receivers in the league and one of the best playmakers in the league. Probably top two. But Tyreek Hill in the game against the Ravens, yeah, he only had three catches for 14 yards. So Ravens safety Deshaun Elliott put out a tweet that it was a, it was a video of Ravens cornerback Anthony Averitt, his first year starting, by the way. They put out a video of him on a play where Tyreek Hill ran a route, Anthony Averitt. He, he just followed him. He did grab the jersey a little bit too now, but he knocked the ball away. It was a great play. And Deshaun Elliott called Anthony Averitt Clam Clampington. He did not say, oh, Tyreek Hill, that dude was sorry. He did not say, oh, that dude Tyreek Hill fell off. He did not say, oh, that dude Tyreek Hill's a bum. No, it was not a shot at Tyreek Hill at all. But Tyreek Hill went and found it on Twitter, and he said, keep that same energy. Next time we play, y'all. So Tyreek Hill, again, somebody, he's on the Chiefs. So he, he definitely ain't used to losing. They lost that game against the Ravens. And, oh, keep that same energy next time we play, y'all. You can tell this is how when somebody's not used to losing. They don't know how to take it. They don't know how to accept it. They don't know how to deal with it. So their energy gets channeled toward all the wrong things. Because this is an energy that they're just not used to being a part of. And I think that's what happened with Vic Fangio this week in this season. Because, again, the Broncos, they, they've been coasting. They've been coasting. They've been blowing these teams out, the Jets, the Jaguars, and the Giants. They, they've been killing these teams. But then they played the Ravens, and the shoe was on the other foot. So I think with Vic, he was just like, oh, man, I, what, it, oh, this is what it feels like to lose in 2021? Oh, okay, oh, my, well, I don't like this. So... It is what it is, though. Um, it's, it, it was a good game. Uh, it could have been worse. could have been better. But it, it was a good game. It was a fun one. So, shout out to the Broncos. Again, that run defense is on point. It's on point. And that pass defense is still really good, too. Ravens got the better of them in the game. But Broncos, they, they'll be fine moving forward. Especially when they get Teddy Bridgewater back. Now, hopefully for them, that's sooner rather than later. Uh, but with concussions, they could be a bit tricky. So, We'll see what happens. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.